Track circuit is a train detection device consisting of a simple electrical circuit in which running rails form part of the circuits of a given portion of a track. Track circuit is used to detect the presence or absence of a train on a given portion of a track. Each such portion is electrically isolated from adjacent track with the help of insulated rail joints. Applications of track circuit Let us know the different applications of a track circuit. Track circuit is used to indicate whether a given portion of track is clear or occupied. It is used to take off signals. It is also used to put back signals to on. Apart from these, there are several other applications like root release, overlap release, track locking, fouling mark protection, block release, speed checking, direction probing, calling on signal initiation, automatic signaling, LC gate warning, IBS, LVCD, BPAC, etc. DC track circuits. DC voltage power source is used for DC track circuit. DC track circuits are of two types. They are open track circuit and closed track circuit. Closed track circuit is further classified into double rail track circuit which is used in non-RE area, single rail track circuit which is used in RE area, open track circuit. In a open track circuit, the track relay is always in de-energized condition, the track portion shows unoccupied, that is clear. When the train enters into this portion of track, the circuit is completed through wheel and axle of the train and the track relay picks up. Advantages and Disadvantages of Open Track Circuit Open track circuit saves power and also it can be used for approach lighting or approach warning. On other side, any failure or disconnection in the open track circuit remain undetected which is unsafe. Open track circuits are now obsolete. Closed track circuit. In a closed track circuit, the track relay is always in the energized condition. When there is no train or vehicle in a given portion of the track, it shows unoccupied. When any train or vehicle enter the given portion, it shows occupied. When the train enters into this portion of track, the track circuit gets shunted and the track relay drops. Track relay back contacts are made, that is, the track circuited portion is occupied by a train or vehicle. The advantages of closed track circuit are 
any failure or disconnection in the circuit results in a failure of track circuit which is safe side hence only closed track circuits are being installed in this module we will consider only closed track circuit single rail track circuit in ac 25 kilo volts re areas one rail of the track is used for traction return current only one rail is used by s and t for track circuit purpose single rail track circuit are provided in re area negative rail is common for both s and t and traction return current double rail track circuit in this type of track circuit both the rails of a track are used by s and t department for track circuit purpose it is suitable for non re areas staggering of polarity in continuous track circuited areas number of track circuits are provided one adjacent to the other as shown on the screen staggering of track feed polarity is done that is positive and negative track feed of adjacent track circuits are interchanged at block joints in case of continuous track circuits if insulated block joints of adjacent track circuit are punctured or damaged and a train or vehicle occupies a track circuit it may not drop due to adjacent feed passing on to the occupied track due to insulated rail joint damage this unsafe condition is avoided by staggering the polarity of adjacent track circuits by staggering of polarities of adjacent track circuits in case block joints punctured then the feed is short circuited and concerned track relay drop which is on the safe side ac track circuits ac voltage of 50 hertz power source is used for ac track circuit these track circuits are normally provided in dc electrified areas a simple diagram of ac track circuit is shown on the screen electronic track circuits that is af tc in af tc power is fed through a audio frequency unit simple diagram of audio frequency track circuit is shown on the screen various components used in track circuits are shown on the screen these are battery track feed battery charger track feed resistance track relay fuses and terminals continuity rail bonds track led cables track led junction box insulated rail joints and choke b type battery depending upon the type of track relay and length of track circuit number of cells per track circuit are connected up to a maximum of 4 cells specification irs s 88 by 
2004 functions to feed the voltage to track circuit working voltage is 2.2 volts and the capacity for each cell is 40 ah or 80 ah track feed battery charger depending upon number of cells connected per track circuit the output voltage is adjusted with the cell selector switch during distilled water topping the switch is adjusted to boost when the battery is fully charged it is kept in trickle mode specification irs s89 by 93 functions to charge the battery of a track circuit input voltage is 110 volts ac and output voltage is 2 to 8 volts dc and capacity is 5 amperes track feed resistance track feed resistance is provided at feed end to regulate voltage to the track depending upon the length of track circuit and type of track relay and other parameters it also prevents direct shorting of battery in case of track circuit portion is occupied by a train. It is adjusted at initial stage of track circuit installation during fail safe adjustments of a track. Fail safe adjustments of a track circuit will be discussed separately. Track feed resistance for RE specification DRG number SA201661 66 by M resistance up to 30 ohms and tapping is 2, 4, 8. 16 ohms track feed resistance for non re up to 15 ohms and tapping is 1 2 4 8 ohms function of track relay a track relay pickup when a track circuit portion is clear. A track relay drop when a track circuited portion occupied by a train. Self type For track circuit length up to 100 meters is 9 ohms. For track circuit length above 100 meters is 2.25 ohms plug-in type QT2 for track circuit length up to 100 meters is 9 ohms for track circuit length up to 100 meters is 4 ohms track relays used in RE territory are self type 9 ohms for any length of track circuit plug-in type QTA2 9 ohms for any length of track circuit plug-in type QBAT 9 ohms for any length of track circuit different type of track relay are used depending upon different track parameters shelf type non ac immunized track relay specification brs 
वन सिक्स फाइव नाइन आई आर एस स्पेसिफिकेशन नंबर एस फिफ्टी फोर इज यूज इन नॉन आर ई सेक्शन फॉर ट्रैक सर्क्यूट लेंथ अप टू हंड्रेड मीटर्स रेजिस्टेंस इज नाइन ओम्स फॉर ट्रैक सर्क्यूट लेंथ अप टू हंड्रेड मीटर्स Minimum pickup voltage is 0.33 to 0.44 volts DC. Minimum pickup current is 39 to 45 milliamperes. Pickup time is 500 milliseconds and drop away time is 60 milliseconds. AC immunity nil. contacts a four front or back b two front two front or back shelf type non ac immunized track relay specification brs specifications number One six five nine IRS specification number S fifty four is used in non RE area for track circuit length more than hundred meters. Resistance is two point two five ohms for track circuit length above hundred meters. Minimum pickup voltage is zero point one six five to zero point two one five volts DC. Minimum pickup current is seventy eight to ninety milliamperes. Pickup time is five hundred milliseconds, and drop away time is sixty milliseconds. AC immunity nil. Contacts two front and two front or back. QT two. Plug-in type non AC immunized track relay. Specification BS specifications number nine thirty eight A. A relay specification number twenty six by six used in non RE for track circuit length up to hundred meters. Resistance is nine ohms for track circuit length up to hundred meters. Minimum pickup voltage is one point four volts DC. Minimum pickup current is one forty to one fifty five milliamperes. Pickup time is five hundred milliseconds, and drop away time is sixty milliseconds. AC immunity nil. Contacts two front or one back. Plug-in type non-AC immunized track relay specification BRS specification number nine three eight relay specifications number twenty six by six is used in non-RE for track circuit length above hundred meters. Resistance is four ohms for track length above hundred meters. Minimum pickup voltage is zero point five to zero point five one five volts DC. Minimum pickup current is one ten to one twenty milliamperes. Pickup time is five hundred milliseconds. 
and drop away time is 60 milliseconds. AC immunity nil contacts two front or one back. Shelf type AC immunized track relay specification BRS specifications number 1659 IRS specification number S54 used in RE for any length of track circuit. Resistance is 9 ohms. Minimum pickup voltage is 0 0.56 to 0 0.68 volts DC. Minimum pickup current is 66 to 72 milliamperes. Pickup time is 500 milliseconds and drop away time is 60 milliseconds. AC immunity is up to 50 volts. AC immunity up to 50 volts AC contacts A four front or back B two front two front or back QT A2 Plug-in type AC immunized track relay specification BRB specifications number 939A 966F2 relay specification number 27 by 7 used in RE for any length of track circuit. Resistance is 9 ohms. Minimum pickup voltage is 1.38 to 1.40 volts DC. Minimum pickup current is 140 to 155 milliseconds. Pickup time is 600 milliseconds and drop away time is 70 milliseconds AC immunity is up to 50 volts AC immunity 50 volts AC contacts 2 front 1 back plug in tie biased AC immunized track relay specification BRB specifications number 939A 966F2 relay specifications number 84 by 88 is used in RE for any length of track circuit. Resistance is 9 ohms. Minimum pickup voltage is 1.733 to 1.75 volts DC. Minimum pickup current is 140 to 175 milliamperes. Pickup time is 600 milliseconds. And drop away time is 70 milliseconds. AC immunity is up to 80 volts. Contacts to front, to back. Plug in tie biased AC immunized track relay specification BRB specifications number. 939A 966F2 Relay specifications number 84 by 88 is used in RE for any length of track circuit. 
resistance is 9 ohms minimum pickup voltage is 1.733 to 1.75 volts dc minimum pickup current is 140 to 175 milliamperes pickup time is 600 milliseconds and drop away time is 70 milliseconds ac immunity is up to 80 volts contacts two front two back fuses and terminals fuses and ara terminals are provided in the location between cable and equipment both at feed end and relay end they protect the equipment from short circuit and lightning they also provide isolation for testing and for replacement of defective components during maintenance 5 amperes non deteriorating type fuses are used 8 swg galvanized iron wires are used to make rail bonds to fix a pair of bonds at each rail joints holes are drilled on the rails with a 6.9 mm drill the bond wire ends are inserted in these holes and channel spins are driven to hold them tight two bonds are used together so as to get lesser bond resistance at the joints two bonds ensure that one of these bonds is always available before maintainer goes for his rounds continuity rail bonds are necessary at all fish plates joints in any track circuit since ordinary fish plates and bolted joints themselves cannot give good electrical continuity for a track circuit these bonds are not required for welded rails track lead cables two core copper cable of 2.5 square millimeter is provided from location box to track lead junction box voltage drop in a track lead cable shall be kept within limits so as to work efficiently on track circuits with minimum power applications generally track feed batteries are kept in location boxes which are very close to track circuits to get better track voltages with minimum applied source as far as possible the length of track lead cable shall be of minimum length track lead junction box track lead junction box is provided near the feed end and relay end and also at intermediate position for connecting track lead cables to the rails through flexible wire rope this enables to take reading of track voltage and current whenever required it also provides isolation between track and cable or equipment
insulated rail joint. Two types of these joints are presently in use. Nylon insulated rail joint, glued rail joints. Materials required to make one insulated rail joint are as follows. End post, one number of end post of 10 mm thickness is required for one joint. End posts are available in three sizes of 90 lbs, 52 kg and 60 kg as per the cross section of rails. It is to be inserted in the gap between the two rails where insulated rails joints to be provided. Left hand side channels. Two numbers of left hand side channels, liners, are required for one joint. These are available in sizes 90 lbs, 52 kg and 60 kg as per cross section of rail. These are to be placed in the rail web one each side that is left side of both side of a track at each joint between rail and fish plates. Right hand side channel. Two numbers of right hand side channels liners are required for one joint. They are available in size 90 lbs, 52 kg and 60 kg as per cross section of rail. They are to be placed in the rail web one on each side that is right hand side of a track at each joint between rail and fish plate. Bushes. Eight numbers nylon bushes are required for one joint. They are all of same size and type. They are to be inserted in the holes of machined fish plates, four bushes in each fish plates. Backing plates. Four numbers of nylon backing plates are required for one joint. They are available in size of 90 lbs, 52 kg and 60 kg as per size of rails. They are to be placed on the fish plates after inserting nylon bushes in fish plates. One on each side that is left hand and right hand side on both sides of a joint. Fish plate machined. Two numbers of fish plates are required for one joint. Fish plates are available in size 90 lbs, 52 kg and 60 kg as per cross section of rails, as per number of track sets and number of insulated rail joints, they are to be obtained from permanent way, engineering department. They are to be chamfered, machined at top and bottom to accommodate side channel plates, liners and the whole size is to be increased to accommodate nylon bushes. Long bolts. Four numbers of long bolts and nuts are required for one joint. 
they are to be obtained from permanent way engineering department glued rail joints glued joints are available in two types g3 l type having six bolts g3 s type having four bolts the joints are fabricated in workshop and transported to the site for insertion in the track the insulated components like bushes liners and end post are fabricated using glass cloth reinforcement and epoxy of an rdso approved quality with hardener by a hand laying process or pressure molding technique these are built up layer after layer to achieve sufficient thickness generally end posts are made of 20 layers liners of 4 layers and bushes of 5 layers all the insulated components of the joints are stuck in a place with an adhesive layer and the bolts are tightened for a permanent setting glued joints are to be tested for their emulated resistance before they are inserted they are to be measured with 100 volts dc megar the insulation resistance is in dry condition not less than 25 mega ohms in wet condition not less than 3 kilo ohms the ballast used on track in the vicinity of these joints shall be cleaned to ensure efficient packing and drainage care must be taken to see that the ballast is clear of rail fastenings the clearance from the underside of rail must not be less than 50 mm as in the case of standard insulated joints the metal burns at the ends of rails shall be removed well in time to avoid short circuiting through them this work shall be done skillfully avoiding damage to end posts normally no relative moment occurs between rails and fish plates at these joints in case failure occurs with separation of rail or fish plate surfaces and relative moment takes place the damaged joints must be replaced soon the electrical resistance of the joints does not decrease appreciably for a considerable time even after this separation procedure and precautions for inserting insulation rail joint in tracks nylon insulated rail joint insulation components are supplied by the snt department which have to be inserted in the rail joint when track circuit is being installed and also whenever they get crushed under traffic resulting in insulation failure fish plates and nut bolts are supplied by the civil engineering department these fish plates are milled plain so as to accommodate insulation liners or channels between the rails and fish plates and holes are made oblong 
to accommodate nylon bushes. The fish bowls of length 140 millimeter instead 115 millimeter to be provided. Four steel baking plates have to be provided for support over the nylon baking plates held by fish bowls. Prerequisite Nylon insulated rail joint materials required for one joint are as follows. Nylon end post 10 mm thickness 1 number Nylon side channel plate lines left hand 2 numbers Nylon side channel plate lines right two numbers, nylon baking plates, four numbers, MS baking plates, four numbers, nylon bushes, eight numbers. Proper components only shall be used according to the railway weightage that is 90 R or 52 kg or 60 kg. The rails ends at the insulation joints shall be cut straight. Otherwise, the nylon end post may break very quickly and joint should be free from creep. All the holes on the rails shall be at the same height. The holes in the rails and in fish plates shall be in correct alignment. Bolts shall not be force driven into the rails. Bolts should not be bent due to which bushes can get crushed. Rail chairs are replaced by steel bearing plates on one sleeper each holding rails on a either side of the joint. This shall be fixed sufficiently clear of rails ends to avoid short circuit. Dog spikes that hold the bearing plates onto sleepers shall not touch the fish plates. The fish bolts of these joints should not turn, rotate under the traffic. For this steel baking plates shall be properly bent on the sides to hold the bolt heads and nuts. Packing 4 to 5 sleepers on either side of the block joint shall always be fully packed. Insulation of rail joint has to be provided along with engineering staff. Proper disconnection memo to be obtained from station master on duty before starting the work and the line must be protected on both sides. Rail joint to be opened by engineering staff only. Insert the end post. Provide left hand and right hand channels on both sides. Place the machined fish plates on both sides. Insert nylon bushes into the fish plates on both the sides. Total 8 bushes. Provide nylon baking plates and onto which provide MS baking plates on the fish plate on both sides of the rail joint. Insert the bolts with ease and provide the nuts and tighten them. Test the insulation to find out any leakage or short circuit. Issue reconnection memo to station master on duty. 
train shunt resistance train shunt resistance is the highest resistance which when connected across the track drops the track relay to ensure safe working of a track circuit a higher value of tsr is desirable in a closed track circuit the track relay is normally in energized condition and the front contacts are closed when tsr is connected across the track track relay drops and its front contact opens we can connect tsr anywhere between feed end and relay end for dc track circuit the minimum permissible tsr value is 0.5 ohms drop shunt resistance drop shunt resistance is the highest value shunting resistance that can cause the track relay to drop it is desirable to drop the track relay even with much higher resistance pick up shunt resistance once a track relay drops it takes some minimum voltage for the relay to pick up again pick up shunt resistance is the least value of resistance with which the track relay picks up importance of pick up shunt and drop shunt resistance on a closed track circuit in longer track circuits sometimes effective shunting by a lighter vehicle may not take place throughout their length at vulnerable points the track relay may again pick up momentarily under occupation this may be due to rusty rails in a portion of track on less frequently used lines this may also be caused by the drop shunt being of critical value and the ballast condition in the track not being uniform so it is necessary that at the time of installation and often during maintenance the pick up shunt value is also noted for such track circuits ballast resistance ballast resistance is the combined resistance offered by ballast and sleepers the ballast resistance acts parallel to track circuit it is the resulting resistance of all small parallel resistances acting across a track circuit how does ballast resistance affect relay voltage when the resulting ballast resistance is high in given track circuit the leakages through ballast are very less or almost nil hence full voltage applied at track feed will pass through rails without much drop and thereby track relay gets maximum voltage that is the relay voltage is directly proportional to the ballast resistance so for better performance of the track circuit high or infinite value of ballast resistance is desirable how to measure vf and if an approved type of digital multimeter is used to measure vf and if connect multimeter to the disconnecting links terminal as shown on the screen how to measure vr and ir 
An approved type of digital multimeter is used to measure VR and IR. Connect multimeter to the disconnecting links terminal as shown on the screen. How to calculate ballast resistance? Ballast resistance is equal to average rail voltage by leakage current. Minimum permissible ballast resistance for track circuits 2 ohm per kilometer within the station yard, 4 ohm per kilometer outside the station yard. Do's and don'ts. Provide proper drainage throughout the track zone. Keep the ballast clear of rail at least by 50 mm. Provide GFN liners and rubber pad for PSC sleepers in track zone. Rail and bond resistance Rail and bond resistance is the combined resistance offered by rail and bond. Rail and bond resistance is equal to voltage drop in rail by average track current. Normally, rail and bond resistance does not vary. Rail and bond resistance should be at the rate 1 ohm per kilometer. Relation between train shunt resistance, ballast resistance, relay voltage, relay resistance and regulating resistance. For more details, click on the links given below. RB versus TSR. RB is the combined resistance offered by ballast and sleepers. TSR is the highest resistance which when connected across the track can drop the track relay. From the graph given on screen, we can conclude that an increased ballast resistance of a track circuit causes a decrease in train shunt resistance value. VR versus TSR VR is the track voltage at relay end. TSR is the highest resistance which when connected across the track can drop the track relay. From the graph given on screen, we can conclude that an increased track voltage at relay end causes a decrease in train shunt resistance value. RR versus TSR RR that is Relay resistance is the resistance offered by relay coil. TSR is the highest resistance which when connected across the track can drop the track relay. From the graph given on screen, we can conclude that up to about 40 ohm relay coil resistance has an improving effect on the TSR. Beyond that, if the relay resistance RR is increased, TSR starts falling. RT versus TSR. RT that is regulating resistance is the resistance offered by regulating device. TSR is the highest resistance which when connected across the track can drop the track relay. From the graph given on screen, we can conclude that similar to relay resistance, increase in regulating resistance 
RT results in an increase of TSR, but beyond certain a limit, it starts decreasing. RB versus VR. RB is the combined resistance offered by ballast and sleepers. VR is the track voltage at relay end. From the graph given on screen, we can conclude that RB, ballast resistance, is directly proportional to VR, relay voltage. RB, VR, TSR RB is the combined resistance offered by ballast and sleepers. VR is the track voltage at relay end. TSR is the highest resistance which when connected across the track can drop the track relay. From the graph given on screen, we can conclude that an increased RB ballast resistance of a track circuit causes a decrease in TSR train shunt resistance and increase in VR relay voltage. Length of a track circuit. For more details, click on the links given below. In station yard, maximum length of any track circuit is 670 meters. Outside station yard, maximum length of any track circuit is 1000 meters. In RE area, maximum length of any track circuit using QTA2 relay is 350 or 450 meters. In RE area, maximum length of any track circuit using QBAT relay is 750 meters. Relays. For more details, click on the links given below. For track circuit up to length of 100 meters, shelf type track relay of 9 ohm resistance is used. For track circuit having length more than 100 meters, Shelf type track relay of 2.25 ohms resistance is used. For track circuit up to length of 100 meters, plug-in type QT2 relay of 9 ohms resistance is used. For track circuit having length more than 100 meters, plug-in type QT2 relay of 4 ohms resistance is used. In RE area, irrespective of length of track circuit, following relays are used. These are AC immunized 9 ohm relay, QT80 2 relay of 9 ohms, QB80 relay of 9 ohms.
चोक इन आर ई एरियाज अ चोक इज टू बी प्रोवाइडेड इन सीरीज विथ नेगेटिव रेल बोथ एट फीड एंड एंड रिले एंड चोक एनहेंसेस द इम्यूनिटी लेवल ऑफ ट्रैक रिले इट ऑल्सो ब्लॉक्स ए सी वोल्टेज कमिंग फ्रॉम ट्रैक टू रिले insulation resistance of psc sleeper insulation resistance between any two inserts of psc sleeper should not be less than 500 ohms a sensitive multimeter of not less than 20 kilo ohms per volt resistance of coil is used to measure insulation resistance of psc sleeper we make use of four inserts that is a b c and d to measure insulation resistance as shown on the screen steps to measure insulation resistance of PSC sleeper connect multimeter across inserts A and B note the reading connect multimeter across inserts A and C note the reading connect multimeter across inserts A and D note the reading connect multimeter across inserts b and c note the reading connect multimeter across inserts b and d note the reading connect multimeter across inserts c and d note the reading the lowest of these readings will be considered the psc sleeper resistance glued rail joints glued joints are inserted by the engineering department as per the requirement in indian railways two types of glued joints are used g3 l type having six bolts G3 S type having four bolts glued joint consists of insulating bush insulating liner adhesive layer fish plate washer nut and bolt insulation resistance of glued joint in dry condition insulation resistance of glued joint should not be less than 25 mega ohms when measuring voltage of 100 volts dc is applied across the joint in wet condition insulation resistance of glued joint should not be less than 3 kilo ohms 100 volts dc measure is used to measure insulation resistance of glued joint measurement of insulation resistance of glued joint insulation resistance of glued joint can be measured by applying a measure between fish bolt and rail fish plate and rail traction bond the following bonds are provided in track circuit zones of ac 25 kV re area transverse bond or z bond cross bond structural bond longitudinal bond these bonds provide easy path for 
traction return currents ensure safe working of the track circuit ensure safety of working person transverse bond transverse bonds are provided between negative rails at every block joint transfer bond facilitates passing of traction return current ahead from one track circuit to the other it helps in detecting a block joint insulated rail joint failure between the two track circuits cross bond cross bonds are provided between negative rails of adjacent track it avoids interference of uninterrupted flow of traction return current with track circuit structural bond structural bonds are provided in between negative rails and fixed traction structures structural bonds are provided between traction mast traction substation negative and negative rail of track longitudinal bond longitudinal bonds are provided at fish plate rail joints for continuity of traction return current through negative rails longitudinal bond need not be provided for welded rail joints stray voltage and stray current in the vicinity of electrical installation such as power station stray currents are prevalent in the earth stray current and stray voltages may prove to be fatal for safe working of dc track circuit in dc track circuit area rails are insulated from ground and thereby voltage may develop across the rails and earth if this voltage is in the favorable direction of track circuit feed end the same voltage appear at track relay and this may prove to be unsafe so before installation of dc tc the presence of stray voltage and current are to be checked for any length of track circuit stray voltage should not be more than 100 millivolts for track circuit length less than 100 meters stray current should not be more than 10 milliamperes for track circuit length more than 100 meters stray current should not be more than 100 milliamperes measurement of stray current connect two suitable types of milliameters as shown in the diagram and take simultaneous reading at a and b record the readings at different periods of time that is morning afternoon evening and extend the test for 3 days so that maximum value can be obtained measurement of stray voltage measure voltage across resistance r at point a and point b as shown in the diagram record the readings at different periods of time that is morning afternoon evening and extend the test for 3 days so that maximum value can be obtained 
remedies if stray current and stray voltage are not within safe permissible limit reduce the length of a track circuit interchange relay end and feed end that is make the direction of feed current opposite to that of stray current if still problem persists use different types of train detection devices like axle counter aftc etc track circuit arrangement in re area only single rail track circuit is adopted negative rail is common for both track circuit negative and traction return current in non re area double rail track circuit is adopted both the rails are used for track circuit percentage release of track relay is equal to drop away voltage by pick up voltage percentage release of track relay should not be less than 68% this table consists of all parameters of track circuit for non re area table consists of all parameters of track socket for re area shown on the screen for safe and reliable working of a dc track circuit it must be ensured that the track relay should drop whenever the track circuited portion is occupied by a train even under the most adverse conditions like short length track circuit high speed train short length train or light engine rusted rail and wheel surface etc track relay gets its maximum voltage when the feed voltage and ballast resistance are maximum and leakages are minimum when a train occupies a track circuit shunting of rails by wheels and axle does not completely disconnect the voltage to the relay instead the wheel and axle provides low resistance path and the relay voltage drops below its rated drop away value and the track relay drops in order to ensure that in all conditions the track relay drops when a train occupies the track the following fail safe adjustments are compulsory under maximum ballast resistance and optimum battery voltage when 0.5 ohms tsr is connected across the track the track relay shall not assume more than 85% of its rated drop away voltage under maximum ballast resistance and optimum battery voltage when 0.5 ohm tsr is removed from the track relay shall not assume more than 250% of its rated pickup voltage for self type relays 300% of its rated pickup voltage for qt2 or qt a2 relays 235% of its rated pickup voltage for qb80 relays under minimum ballast resistance 
and minimum battery voltage, track relay shall assume at least 125% of its rated pickup voltage. Fail safe adjustment procedure. Step 1. Note the rated pickup voltage and rated drop away voltage of the track relay. In case RPUV and RDAV are not available on the label of the relay, then calculate these values by using variable resistance and power supply. Step 2. Calculate 85% of RDAV for all types of relay, 125% of RPUV for all types of relay, 250% of RPUV for STTR that is self type relay 300% of RPUV for QT2 and QTA2 relays 235% of RPUV for QB AT relays. Step 3. Bring the track relay to feed and location and connect it directly to the track feed, eliminating ballast resistance, rail resistance, and cable loss. Step 4. Connect TSR of 0 0.5 ohms across the relay. Step 5. Adjust the regulating resistance to attain 85% of rated drop away voltage. Step 6. Remove TSR and measure the voltage of relay. It shall not be more than 250% of its RPUV for self-type relay, 300% of its RPUV for QT2 or QTA2 relays, 235% of its RPUV for QBAT relays. Step 7. In case it is more than the above value, adjust the same to 250% for self-type relay, 300% for QT2 or QTA2 relay, 235% for QBAT relay by increasing the regulating resistance. If it is less, then do not increase. Step 8. Now, connect track feed and track relay to the track at respective places and measure the relay voltage. Step 9. Under minimum ballast resistance and minimum battery voltage, measure relay voltage. This should not be less than 125% of its rated pickup voltage. If the voltage is less than 125% of its rated pickup voltage, then do not increase the voltage 
as it may improve with improving ballast resistance. If the safety parameter of fail safe could not be adjusted properly, then remedy 1. Reduce the length of a track circuit suitably. Remedy 2. Provide cut section track circuits. Track circuit practices in non-RE area. In non-RE area, double rail track circuits are provided. A typical layout of DC track circuit suitable for non-RE territory is shown on the screen. DC track circuit in RE area. In RE area, single rail track circuits are provided. A typical layout of DC track circuit suitable for RE territory is shown on the screen. In RE area, four types of traction bonds are provided between the negative rails for easy path of traction return current. These are longitudinal bond, cross bond, transverse bond, structural bond. The continuity rail bond and thermic weld bond are provided at all fish plate joints for non welded rails only. Longitudinal bonds are provided at fish plate rail joints for continuity of traction return current through negative rails. Longitudinal bond need not be provided for welded rail joints. Cross bond. Cross bonds are provided between negative rails of adjacent track. Transverse bond. Transverse bonds are provided between negative rails at every block joint. Transverse bond facilitates passing of traction return current from one track circuit to the other. It helps in detecting a block joint failure between the two track circuits. Structural bond. Structural bonds are provided between negative rails and traction structures. Continuity bond. Continuity bonds are provided at every fish plate joint. These bonds are used only for non-welded rails. Bonding practice in point zones. Series bonding. Continuity bonding provided between the rails of track circuit is in series, that is, both positive and negative rails are connected in series. 
number of block joints are more making it more reliable as number of block joints are more maintenance cost is high and failures are more parallel bonding continuity bonding provided between tracks is in parallel that is both positive rail and negative are connected in parallel number of block joints are less compared to series bonding and therefore less reliable less number of block joints require less maintenance cost series comparallel bonding this is the most widely adopted bonding practice in point zone positive rails are connected in series and negative rails are connected in parallel as positive rails are connected in series and negative rails are connected in parallel number of block joints are less provision of track circuit in crossover with derailing switch point zone number of block joints are 8 type of bonding used is positive in series negative in parallel provision of track circuit in crossover with sand hump point zone number of block joints are 14 type of bonding used is positive in series and negative in parallel provision of track circuit in crossover with parallel movement on both sides zone number of block joints are 14 type of bonding used is positive in series and negative in parallel provision of track circuit in ladder crossover zone number of block joints are 12 type of bonding used is positive in series and negative in parallel provision of track circuit in diamond crossover zone number of block joints are 12 type of bonding used positive in series and negative in parallel provision of track circuit in diamond crossover with single slip zone number of block joints are 12 type of bonding used is positive in series and negative in parallel provision of track circuit in diamond crossover with double slip zone number of block joints are 16 type of bonding used is positive in series and negative in parallel provision of track circuit in scissor cross over zone number of block joints are 28 type of bonding used is positive in series and negative in parallel fouling protection in case of track circuit in point zone the track circuit must extend beyond the fouling mark while marking the block joint beyond fouling mark the extra length between wheels or axle bases to the end of buffer or coupling should be taken into consideration if a train stands within the fouling mark this will foul the movement of other trains in such a case the concerned point zone track circuit shows occupation the point 
cannot be operated and the signal leading over the points cannot be taken off. Track circuit beyond signal for replacement. Provide track circuit at least 10 meter ahead of a signal. This avoids any confusion to a driver of diesel engine where driver may sit in rear. Dead section in track circuit. Dead section in a track circuit is that portion of a track in which occupation by a vehicle cannot be detected. These are due to the vehicle not shunting the rails of the same track feed polarity or due to staggering of block joints. Examples of dead section. Dead section occurs due to rail ends on crossovers being out of square. Dead section occurs due to level crossing road. Dead section occurs due to bridge or culvert under the track. Precautions to be taken to avoid unsafe condition of traffic over dead sections. Dead sections shall not accommodate a four-wheeler trolley entirely itself without shunting any life portion of track circuit at the same time. Length of dead section shall be less than minimum wheelbase length. If one trolley of eight-wheeler gets entirely accommodated in dead section, the second trolley of the same vehicle shall not go beyond the line portion of that track circuit in either direction. Trap circuit If dead section is longer than 10.8 meter, a trap circuit shall be provided including control of dead section trap by two other track circuits on either sides. When a train coming from the left is trapped in the dead section, the BTR which has dropped cannot pick up since ATR has already picked up and CT is not yet occupied. Similarly, when the train coming from the right is trapped in the dead section, BTR which has dropped cannot pick up as CTR has already picked up and AT is not yet occupied. BTR picks up only when the train passes over AT or CT after completely clearing BT and the dead section. Once picked up, it is kept energized through its own front contact till shunts it again by a vehicle. If the last vehicle of a train gets trapped in the dead section, Parting from the train and the front portion goes ahead over the track circuit in advance. This cannot be detected, but this is very unlikely to occur. Also, the vehicle trapped in the dead section of BT cannot be detected at the time of AT or BT failing. Installation of DC track circuit Use approved types of material such as block joint, 
relays, choke, cables, battery, charger, etc. Provide insulated rail joint as per SIP, Signal Interlocking Plan. Joints should be square. Avoid staggering of joints. If unavoidable, ensure that the distance between two staggered joints should be less than the minimum wheelbase of the vehicle. Avoid dead sections in between track circuit. If this is not possible, provide trap circuit. Avoid track circuit in level crossing area. Keep the stray voltage and stray current within the specified limits. Provide proper drainage system to avoid water logging. Keep the ballast clean and clear of rails at least by 50 millimeters. For track circuit in point zones, provide insulated stretchers, gauge plates and crossing plates as per approved drawings. Provide anti-tilting and anti-theft arrangement. Ensure that all the relay contacts are equally loaded and spare contacts are utilized. Ensure that fouling is protected when track circuit is provided. Distance between track circuit termination and fouling mark shall not be less than 3 meters. The insulated rail joint shall be at least one rail length in advance of a signal. Avoid provision of insulated rail joints at the stock rail joint SRJ. Provide J-type pentrol clips at insulated rail joint sleepers. Ensure that TSR, RB, RR, etc are within the specified limits. Maintenance and safety checks for DC track circuit. Do the following maintenance and safety checks periodically. Viz fortnightly or as and when required. Check condition of glued joints or block joints. Check the connections at track feed end and relay end. Check the connections between charger, battery, regulating resistance, choke, TLJB, rails and track relay. All connections must be tight. If necessary, check condition of battery and top up. If necessary, adjust the charging currents and voltages. Check insulation resistance of the tail cable once in six months. Check and measure the relay voltage and ensure that they are within safe limits of fail-safe adjustments.